is enough said. What's up, Heat Nation? Your boy Ernest here, back with another special episode of Dos Minutos. Got my boy Amir from Team To Be Miami Heat. How you doing, my dude? Doing good, man. Love the positive energy. Sounds like you're doing a lot better, huh, with the foot injury? Oh, man. No, it still hurts like a mother, but you know what? <laughs> I woke up today, bro. Any day that God wakes me up, it's a great day. It's, always, it's like I tell all my listeners all the time. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Doesn't matter how hard life hits you down. When you get back up, you brush yourself off, and you keep moving forward, my dog. My foot hurts, but I ain't dead. I'm alive, bro, and I'm ready to go. We ready to rock and roll on another Dos Minutos adventure, my dude? Yes, sir, man. I love that positivity. I, I honestly, from your episodes, I wake up every morning and I think that I hear your words in my head saying, like, I'm just blessed to be here for another day, honestly. So Facts. love to up, hear that. Keep up dude. the positivity, brother. We all love it for sure. Always, man. Always. You know what, bro? It's not, you know, not just me. I know we talk basketball, but we talk in life right now. Bro, it's, it's the amazing wife I have. Like my wife just constantly drills me with positivity, constantly drills me with like great words, always picks me up when I get knocked down. You know, anytime anybody in, you know, ha has anyone like that in their life and it can, it doesn't have to be a significant other. It could be a friend. It could be a boss, it could be a mom, anybody that gives you some type of positive affirmation. You have to keep that person in your life because that's what we all need, my man. So I, I appreciate you saying that, my dog. That like, really means a lot. That's your love language, huh? If you're married, right? If you if you're married, people know what love language. So you're like me. Words of affirmation, dude. Like I don't know oh, why. Yeah. If anybody gives me words of affirmation, man, that that hypes me up for sure. So. Exactly. And that's what I like to preach, bro. Because we talk Miami Heat basketball, but we also live the same life. We all got to wake up and go into the grind. So any anything that we can do with a positive mindset really changes everything. But you know, it's funny because we're talking positive and every channel that we have, we talk positive, but today we're going to go a little bit on the, not negative side, but a little bit on the pessimistic side, I guess you can say, because um, and for those of you, Amir on his channel, Team To Beat Miami Heat, we are going to be posting another episode of this topic where we're basically doing the floor and the ceiling for the Miami Heat in 2025. The reason why we're doing this, Amir, uh, because you actually did a post yesterday on your channel that ESPN recently released uh, the records on how they feel that every team is going to finish. And the Miami Heat finished with 44 and a half victories. Now, I can wipe my my ass with what ESPN has to say, but you know, you've said right. it in your channel, but we, you haven't said it on my channel. Let the listeners know. What do you think about what ESPN had to say about Miami heat? I don't give a shit what ESPN has to say about the Miami heat. I don't care what bleacher report has to say about the Miami heat. Like I get my content from folks on podcasts and on YouTube. So shout out to five reasons, sports heat beat basement, like just all these networks that we listen to locked on heat and then of course our boys that we listen to trent martel anthony denaro there's so many content creators out there i follow them specifically because yep. espn was the shit back in the day bleacher report five six years ago was the shit but they just produce and promote like the weakest like speculations and rumors like there's it's less factual than it used to be so anyway i I don't hate how they projected us um, because again, it's based on different variables, but again, these are just projections. So like, how the hell mm -hmm. do they know? Like, did they predict the Sacramento Kings a few years ago? were going to be a three seed. Did they predict that the Miami heat and you mentioned in my video, were going to be the number one seed back in 2022. Did they predict last season that the thunder were going to be the number one seed like this fast with, with Gilgis Alexander, right? And with Jalen Williams and all those young pieces, Chet Holmgren, yeah. I didn't see that happening. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I can care less, but I do agree though, where in terms of the, the floor, like this is the floor for the Miami heat. So ESPN is not saying this is the floor. They, this is like them saying this is the best, right? Yeah. This is what they predict will happen. And yep. we're talking about regular season, not, yeah. not playoffs. And so, they project us, and I looked it up. This would put us in the eighth seed. This would be the eighth best record in the East. Um, and I think that's our floor. I don't think there's any way that the Miami Heat finish the regular season with a worse record than the eighth seed. And that still sucks because we've been a playing team for two seasons now in a row, and we want to avoid that. But, Ernest, let me ask you this. Do you think there's any chance – 
I'm looking right now at the standings from last year. The Bulls, the Hawks, the Nets, the Raptors, and then that's all I'm going to name because the other three franchises are poverty franchises, right? So I don't need to talk about the Pistons or Wizards. Do you think any of those teams are going to leapfrog us this year? No, no, no. I mean, no, I mean, and you know what's funny? Like we can say, like you can honestly say, oh, the ceiling is – top four seed like we said in your channel and an nba finals trip and then somebody else can say well the floor is to get one of the worst records in the nba and then be moved to the lottery actually not that's 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 a good position too the worst scenario would be where we've lived at a lot which is the middle mediocrity getting anywhere from seed seven to ten and being in that damn play-in this Miami Heat team is not a play-in team. But like I said, this is the floor episode. What are some reasons that would keep us as a mediocrity team are the same reasons that has kept us as a play-in team the last two years? Injuries. Jimmy Butler taking a lot of games off. Yep. Injuries. You know, people not playing 82 games, which we've seen a lot constantly every year with this team. But you do know that at certain sprouts, they're going to, when it looks like they're, they're, they're losing and okay, you know, they may be a lottery team. Then they're going to go on a five game winning streak and get themselves two games about 500. They're going to be 22 and 20. And you're going to be like, what the hell is going on? And then halfway of the year, they may go 25 and 20. And then they finish the year 45 and 37. And here we go again, another play in trip. So that to me is the floor. Because that's just stuck in mediocrity. Yeah. Three words. Curse of LeBron, as you say on your channel. <laughs> it's the injuries. It's like it's the injuries and it's also the combination of also bad contracts, which again, we 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 will praise the organization as a lot of other folks in comments on YouTube videos, not just our videos, but just in general in the community or on Twitter, are bashing Spo for making mistakes last year, coaching horribly, and Pat Riley asleep at the wheel, and Mickey being cheap, and all these things. Which, okay, we can still criticize them for making mistakes, but like again, the holistic view and the history of this organization and where we are now compared to other franchises, you have to give them their kudos because they've done more good than they've done bad. But again, we can criticize the front office, right? And Mm -hmm. some of the other mistakes they made too, Ernest, to keep us in the middle. We're giving out bad contracts. Yep. So like we haven't been able to upgrade our roster the way we wanted to. Not talking Donovan. I'm not talking about Dame and the superstars. But because of Duncan's contract, we gave it to him so quickly, five-year, 90 million. If we gave him a four-year, 60 million or 50 million, way more feasible. Same with Tyler Hero. We gave him that four-year, $120 million deal. It doesn't look horrible, but it's not good, right? So those are other reasons why we could be stuck in the middle outside of the, the curse of LeBron being the most injured team every goddamn year, not every year, but but we were the fourth most injured team last year, right? Like we had 35 different starting lineups. Like those are the reasons why the floor can be the same, or it could be worse. If a Jimmy and bam, you know, knock on wood doesn't happen. Get a serious injury at the beginning of the season and miss the entire season. Like we can afford a Terry Rozier, Tyler hero injury. Like last year, we can't afford a Jimmy and Bam injury like long term, yep. right? Especially, I don't care what people say. We can talk shit on Jimmy about his extension, all the load management, all that stuff, but he's still our best player. He's yeah. still our best player. Bam's our most important player. Bam is our future. Bam might be kind of like the best all around player, but still, Jimmy's our most, or he's our best player. Excuse me. He's the one who elevates us the most. He's the one who's a postseason superstar. He's not a regular yeah. season superstar, but we need him to be a regular season superstar if we want to have our ceiling, which go check out on my channel, Ernest's reaction uh, in terms of who he thinks or what he thinks the Miami Heat ceiling will be. But we need Jimmy to play like third team all NBA, Jimmy. We don't need first team, second team, but get at least third team, average like 22 points a game, six rebounds, five assists, play defense, don't load manage, play 65 games. And, we can have a good season next year right now, right? We but could. At worst, eight is not bad, though, for the worst, right? I don't. See I mean, look, eight. it's just you don't want to be another play-in team because no. you, you like it's it's just playing useless games for no reason. It's it's hampering yourself on the road all the time. Like, bro, 
having home court advantage works. Now, I will say this. I mean, I, I, that whole 2023 stretch, you know, when the Heat were always a road team, they always got one on the road. And I'm confident yep. that he can always do that. But having home court advantage is great. Not being in the play-in is great. Having that time off before the playoffs, I just think it's stupid why the Miami Heat didn't prioritize themselves more to get out of the play-in, especially last year. You had older players on your team. You Those players need a break before the playoffs. But no, you have them play into the playoffs. You have them have those useless games. It breaks you down. Look at that. Look what happened in the play-in game. Jimmy got hurt. Had you yep. just won against the Pacers that regular season game. You would have been the sixth seed. You would have not had to do that. You would have had to play. You would have probably would have played who? Uh, New York in the first round or Milwaukee in the first round. It would have been, if you were the sixth seed and you played Milwaukee, you would have easily gotten out of there. But that's another world. You know what I yeah, mean? Totally. But here's here's one thing I will say and why I really like this floor episode. Because I'm going to let all the Heat fans know one thing. And I'm going to give them a little woosa, A little. <sighs> if this is another floor season if this is another rip my hair off play in tournament season for once the he fans can sigh with relief because that tells you this team ain't it if they make another miraculous trip to the finals as an eighth seed well then i'm just gonna put a sock in my mouth and never doubt jimmy butler again i'm gonna ride the jimmy butler coat train for the rest of my life and if anybody says anything bad about him i'll just go no wrong 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 Fact. but exactly but if we have another play in year and we get bounced in the playoffs, guess what, guys? Jimmy's not the dude. He walks. You get to free up your financial uh, flexibility and you get to build around Bam. And we get to finally see what this team is going to be moving forward with Jaime, Jovic, Hero, Bam, Terry, all these guys. And now you're going to have a fun team because teams like that are fun. Look at the 2004 Miami Heat with Wade, Jones, Karan Butler, Lamar Odom, Brian Grant. That was a fun team. And then Shaq came on and then it became all business. So it was a really fun team. So, I, so before we close out, Amir, let's say if the floor is that, mm -hmm. do you think this Miami Heat team can build around Bam Adebayo, a championship team quickly? Yes, because if we don't, uh, so if we, if, if we realize that at the end of next season, that, Jimmy, well, it actually, it all depends because Jimmy has a player option. So, because Jimmy, it all depends on Jimmy. He's opting like, out. He's opting out, bro. Hundred percent, unless he get in, he gets injured. He's opting out because he needs to get one more payday, and the only way he can do that is by opting out and signing like a two or three year contract. True. So it's only smart win. for him. And he would want to hopefully go to a contender where he does exactly have last shot because he is a competitive dog. Yeah, he he'll get a three-year deal. He will yeah. get a three-year deal. He might even get a four-year deal from another team. Right now, for Jimmy, it's all about packing the money. True, and he also might even take a discount technically if he gets more years. Like he might get less per year than he wanted, kind of like Clay. Mm -hmm. He yeah. might go to. He might surprise you, be like, "Oh, you actually went to this team and you took like you took 120 million at 40, 40, and 40." Right. What you wanted, which is 56, 58, and then whatever. So let's just pretend. Oh yeah. So let's say if Jimmy Butler's not on this team, let's say he opt. We let's say we're the ninth seed next season playing team. We lose the first round or whatever, first game of the play in. Um, yeah, we have time to build around Bam Adebayo because we'll have Jimmy's 46 or 50, his, his player options for 52 million. So that yep. 52 million is off the books. We off go from the like, books. We go from 189 to 133 with 13 guys on our roster. So that means we can add two really good guys, technically, or one big guy, yeah. or we wait till 2026, one extra year. Like maybe I don't want to say tank because if Jimmy leaves, we're going to be a bad team anyway. I, yep. If Jimmy leaves, we go from the seventh, eighth seed based on ESPN's projections, based on what we've done the last two years. We go to that Chicago, Atlanta, Brooklyn tier where we're probably going to be like a nine or 10 seed. And it probably is better if we don't make the playoffs that next year and allow a full on front court of Kellel, um, Jovic, Bam, play Tyler, play Pele Larson, play Kashad, let all those guys go, do a soft tank for one year. You have all the free space from Jimmy's salary off the books. You let them grow. Maybe we get a top ten pick, a top five pick. And it's not it's not tanking intentionally. It's because Jimmy's gone. We're going to have only one star, so we're not going to be good anyway. You let the young guys play, so it's kind of a soft I mean, they may game. surprise you, man. They may surprise you. Or they may surprise you because you know? fucking Miami Heat were the best team in the fucking world, and I love this team. <laughs> that's what they're I think. Team. I think that's uh, that's a better team than the 2017 team, yeah. but I hear, I hear you. But the last part I was going to say, though, is then in 2026, 
Bam's former college team. De'Aaron Fox becomes a free agent. Look Luka becomes a free agent. <laughs> Steph Curry, Embiid, like all these names become Look at free that. agents in 2026. Luka's the one I got my eye on. That's like, the next one. That would be insane. Anthony Edwards and like three, like whatever. Like who knows? The sky's the limit. Yep. And we have a... Just stick with your goddamn team, even if they suck. If the Miami Heat are the worst team in the NBA next year, I'm still going to watch every game. I'm still going to love them. I'm still going to cover Facts. this team. It's going to suck. But guess what? There's no sweet without the sour, right? Exactly. Um, and it doesn't matter. That's why I've been telling, I've been saying it, Amir. Doesn't matter how this season is going to end. It's going to be positive regardless. It's going to be great because if we move far and get a championship, awesome. But if it fails, great. We get to move forward. We get to get out of this run it back mindset and we get to move forward. So we're going to close it out there. You guys, Heat Nation, we want to hear from you. What do you guys think in the comments? Do you think that the Miami Heat are poised for a floor season? Do you think ESPN is right with this 44 win prediction? Or do you think the Miami Heat can come out the other way? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. You got my boy, Amir. Team to be Miami Heat. You got myself, Miami Heat Talk. Don't forget about the other boys, Trent, Miami Heat Network, Martel, Miami Heat Zone Podcast, and my boy, Anthony DiNardo. Thank you guys so much for the time and support. Amir, thanks for jumping on. Uh, no again, we got another episode of Dos Minutos. We got a lot more coming, you guys. Thank you all so much. And that is enough said. Thanks, Amir. Good shit.